Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Atlantic Union Mission and Evangelism at Home. We hope you had a happy Sabbath today. <laughs> I am Dorothy Rhoda. Hi, good evening, Dorothy. Yes. This is going to be a phenomenal event again by the Atlantic Union Mission and Evangelism at Home. Yes, it is. Last night was powerful. We emphasize the word, the Bible. Uh -huh. And guess what? It was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And I'm just yeah. looking forward to, you know, what we're going to talk about today and for the rest of the week. It's going to be a powerful week and we are looking forward to having you join us. So please continue to share the link, um, get everybody involved and make sure you take part um, at the very end in evangelism to your community. Awesome. Awesome. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Bow your heads with me wherever you are. Dear Father God, we are grateful that we are in your presence. I want to thank you for all of the persons who have joined us this evening. And I know that you are going to speak through our dear Dr. Paula Ovlier as she gives the word this evening. So I thank you again for your presence here. Amen. Amen. So I know we have so many conferences within this union. To name a few, you know, if you are coming and joining us from a conference, please share with us. Let us know where you're coming from and also where, whether it's a church, let us know. And we have Greater New York. Greater New, New York. York. Are they in the chat? They need to type in the chat because I don't see anything happening <laughs> in our chat on any one of our platforms. Is Greater New York in the house or is it just you, Rhoda? I don't know. Maybe we'll see. I think we have some greater. We have some church family members. Excellent. Northeastern conference. Well, Northeastern's in the house because I'm here as well as our speaker this <laughs> evening. She is our youth director and I'm looking forward to hearing a word from her. Northeastern, Amen. I'm sure, is here in great numbers. And if you don't mind, I'm going to interject right here. I would be remiss if I didn't invite all of the push family pray until something happens to Amen. put their names in the chat. There's 700 plus devices that, oh, am I going on and on about them? Well, I just have to. 700 plus devices who come in in the morning to intercede Amen. on behalf of themselves and their friends. And I'm so excited about their presence too. Okay, Rhoda, who else do we have? New York Conference. Mm, I'm sure they're here. Come on, so New York Conference, put your name, where New York, are you? The next is Southern New England. And when you have mm -hmm. Southern New England, you got to have Northern New England. Mm -hmm. And then, not too far away, Bermuda. Bermuda so, in the house. Amen. I wonder if they're having better weather than I am in my <laughs> town. I, I don't know about you, better. but I had snow this week. Snow. Apart from the earthquake, we had some snow. So I'm just grateful that all of us were, were safe and well. If you felt the tremors and everything, the snow, all the, um, you know, shifting um, weather. But I'm great that you are all here. And while you're putting where you're from, there you go, Poughkeepsie SD. I see some of my church members. Welcome. And uh, at this moment, I'll just like to take a moment to invite our very own Dr. David McKenzie to join us and give us some greetings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, to God be the glory. It's a joy and a privilege to be a part of mission and evangelism at home. Ladies and gentlemen, our hosts, they are great. Do you agree with me? Oh, we want to thank the Lord for our coordinator, Rota, from the Greater New York Conference. She is amazing, doing a fantastic job there. She's there in the beautiful red. And we also <laughs> have uh, uh, Elder Qualey, uh, who was once greater. Now she is uh, Northeastern Conference. <laughs> She's in the green. We want to thank the Lord for them. And they're doing an amazing job thus far. Ladies and gentlemen, this week is going to be a fantastic a great, amazing week. You can't afford to miss any night. Remember tonight, we are dealing with the Trinity. If you have not yet invited anyone, pause right now. Wherever you are, send the Zoom link. Uh, sorry, the, the Facebook link and the YouTube link. Let them know that one of the great, powerful speakers will be in the house in a few seconds. <laughs> in the form of Dr. Olivier. 
And ladies and gentlemen, she will be dealing with the Trinity. I love to hear Dr. Olivier speak. Lord have mercy. And then ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night, we have Pastor Daniel Valez. He will be dealing with We Still Believe in Creation. Then we have Pastor Dan Whitlow. He will be dealing with We Still Believe in the Great Controversy. Then Pastor Emmanuel Contreras. We still believe in Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. <clears throat> That's a very interesting topic. Then we have Pastor Dudley Francois. He will be dealing with We Still Believe in Law and Grace. Uh, Director Trevor Sleisner, who we still believe in the gift of prophecy. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have Pastor Ronald Rodriguez. He will be dealing with we still believe in the Sabbath. And we will bring the house down with Pastor, Pastor Steed. He will be preaching on the topic, we still believe in the millennium and the end of sin. Share the word, share the word. And then we, are, we will be back on Sunday, April 14, with our projects. Conferences around this union will gather in different locations. Greater New York will be at Williams Oval Bridge, Bronx and Flutching Meadow, Meadow Park in Queens. They'll be cleaning that park and beautifying that park. Northern New England Conference <clears throat> will be on the Clift Island. Clift Island. They'll be making cushions for chairs in the church and beautifying the location and the island. Hallelujah. We also have New York Conference. They were in Buffalo last week. They commenced last week sharing food to the hungry. Southern New England Conference will be at Bethel French SDA Church remodeling the front of the church. Contractors, even if you're not a part of Southern New England, join us at Bethel French in Boston. And my brothers and sisters, we will have an amazing time. Mission and evangelism is alive. God is good. My president, Dr. O, Dr. Pierre Omlier, he sent his greetings. The Atlantic Union is excited about this program. Spread the word and bring people out nightly. Over to our amazing host, Coordinator Rota and Elder Quayley. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. McKenzie. At this time, we'd like to take some moment to introduce our speaker for the day. And that is none other than Dr. Paula Olivier Nefil Zami. Was born in Brooklyn, New York. She spent the early years of her life in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and then moved to Miami, Florida. She and her family were members of the Perrine SDA Church, where they deliberately invested in her spiritual development and academic journey. In 1996, after weeks of prayer and fasting, Dr. Olivier answered God's call to enter the gospel ministry. Since then, life has never been the same. She is a graduate of Oakwood University with a BA in Ministerial Theology and a minor in Psychology. She holds a Master of Divinity from Andrews University Theological Seminary and a Doctor of Ministry degree from United Theological Seminary. She is the author of Battle Tested, Breaking Through Challenges to Build Your Best Life Now. Well, Pastor Ovalea, oh, did I say it wrong? I apologize. English is my first language. Oh my, she is a trailblazer. She is the first female-led pastor of Haitian descent in the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. She has served as an associate pastor of Miracle Temple, now Miracle City in Baltimore, Maryland, as an administrator and youth pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church of the Oranges and in New Jersey. She served for not one year, not two years, but nine years as a lead pastor of a predominantly young adult congregation, Montclair First Seventh-day Adventist Church. She most recently served as a lead pastor of the Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Church in Freeport, New York. Her ministry has been blessed by God to be both spiritual and innovative. 
Her preaching ministry has been featured on local and national conferences, radio and television, including the Holt Channel and 3ABN. She has spoken across the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Venezuela, the Caribbean, and Israel. And Dr. Ovler mm -mm -mm, is also a John Maxwell certified speaker, a trainer, and a coach. She is founder and creator of the Life Skills Academy that teaches community youth financial literacy, basic automotive, health, and job readiness. What a powerful woman she is, Rhoda. Yeah, so true. Dr. Olivia also served as the official clergy representative for the Montclair Community Intervention Alliance, MCIA. MCIA administered a state-funded grant supporting local groups that promote substance abuse prevention among youth and advised the City Council on Related Matters. Montclair Neighborhood Development Corporation and MNDC awarded Dr. Olivier the Carlos Warmly Community Service Award. She was also honored with a joint legislative resolution from the Senate and General Assembly of the states of New Jersey for her leadership. Dr. Olivier served on the District Family Advisory Council of the Montclair Board of Education, working on matters such as closing the academic achievement gap. She worked with the Bergen County NAACP to block Bill S-788. Bill S-788 would prevent public access to police body cam footage. Olivier received the Spiritual Leader Award by the Haitian American Committee of New Jersey. Olivier holds several certificates in nonprofit leadership and crisis intervention. She's a member of the Worldwide Federal Chairplanes Association. Dr. Olivier also served on the Freeport Advisory Council of the District Attorney's Office of Nassau County in Long Island. New York. She was also a member of the Freeport Police Reform Council sponsored by the Community Affairs Division. Dr. Olivia was 2021 honoree of New York State Senator John Brooks Black History and Women's History Celebration. While at the September 26, 2001 constituency session, Dr. Ovlier was elected to serve as our new youth director for Northeastern Conference Light Up the Chat. For our director, October 4, 2023, she was voted as the president of BETA, that is Black Adventist Youth Directors Association. And with God's help, a surrendered life and the prayers of the saints, she looks forward to what Christ will do through his youth, young adults in these closing moments of earth's history. So Pastor Ovalier is married to the wonderful Dr. Smith Ovalier. He is her partner in ministry and ordained pastor in Northeastern Conference. Her favorite text comes from Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God. Who oh, my. He loved and he gave himself for me. Mm -hmm. This is her motivation for ministry, a deep sense of indebtedness to the cross of Calvary. What a wonderful woman of God. I Amen. need to pray in your heart along with us as we look forward to a dynamic word. Amen. And right before Dr. Olivia speaks, we're going to be blessed by a song by our very own brother Odanye Roden.
Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, happy day indeed. It is a privilege to be here with you this evening. Hello, Atlantic Union family. I bring you greetings on behalf of my president, Dr. Abraham Jules, my executive secretary, Dr. L. Dean King, and our CFO at Northeastern, Dr. Brian McDonald. I also bring you greetings on behalf of the Northeastern Conference Youth and Young Adult Ministries Department, yours truly as director, and my wonderful associates, Pastor Javier Alcon and Pastor Dudley Francois. I bring you greetings on behalf of Beta, and I also bring you greetings on behalf of my dear husband, Dr. Pastor Smith Olivier. I want to take a moment and shout out and acknowledge the uh, awesome and incredible leadership of our union youth director and special assistant to the union uh, president, Dr. David McKenzie, a wonderful man of God who's passionate about ministry, passionate about evangelism, and wants us to have a well-rounded relationship with God, including understanding our doctrines. So if you will with me, my assignment this evening for the next few moments are: is we still believe in the Trinity. We still believe in the Trinity. Our scripture reading is taken as very straightforward. Israel. The Lord our God, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Let us pray. Spirit, have your way. Amen. All of us, all of us have prized possessions. And for some, it may be a baseball caught at an MLB baseball game after the player hit a home run and the ball reached the stands and you out hustled the crowd around you and you caught the ball, it fell in your glove. 
For others, it may be an autographed jersey that you chased down a celebrity and took uh, their selfie with them and had them sign it for you. And that is your prize possession. But this evening, I want to share with you one of my prized possessions. And, and it really is it, this cute little craft. It is a lion craft. It is an adorable lion craft. It is, um, this craft is, is dear to me because it was a gift from one of my adventurers in Buffalo, New York. Shout out to Western New York. It was June 2022, and I was visiting a church. And as the Lord have mercy. The adventurers were having a, a special program. And I immediately, I jumped in the program. They were studying the book of Daniel. And there I am with my little friend. And she has all of this energy. And I believe she's about eight years old. And after this activity, they transitioned to arts and crafts. And while they were working, I was speaking to some of the staff. While they were working and I was speaking to the staff, I checked my watch and I realized it was time for me to go into the sanctuary. And as I was leaving the room, my young friend stopped me and with her arm outstretched and her eyes filled with eagerness. She handed me her lion craft that she had been working on so diligently. I bent down and said, this is beautiful. Thank you so much. And, and I took it and I went inside. And I need you to know something, saints. Dr. McKenzie, I put it away and it was not until I had gotten to my home in New Jersey and I pulled out the craft to show it to my husband that I finally noticed what was on the back of the lion craft. And my heart was even more touched because there on the back of the foam craft, while I was speaking to the staff, she had been drawing a picture of me in my master guide uniform. Wow, there is my beret with the Master Guide logo. Uh-huh. Now, as you can tell, it is not an exact replica. There are some slight variations. Hmm. It's not a perfect replica, but it's one of my prized possessions. Please pay attention. Hmm. On one side of the image is the original. On the other side of the image is the eight-year-old's expression after encountering the original. I'm going to say that again. On one side is the original. On the other side is an eight-year-old's expression after encountering the original. Come here, saints. I need you to understand this evening that when it comes to humans trying to understand and explain God, we plain, infinite, and perfect God. And I don't care what degree you have when you try to explain God, understand it's going to be an imperfect reflection. So we must approach this topic with humility. My brothers and sisters, the Trinity is not simple, but I want you to know that that's okay. Ah, the Trinity is not simple, but I want you to know that that's okay. Why? Because I, I, I need you to think about the fact most 
of reality is not simple. Mm. For instance, every one of the trillion cells of our body is incredibly complex. Even the proteins in our cells are complex. Family relationships are complex. Friendships are complex. Marriage is complex. For some, sports are complex. Some still can't even figure out their 1990, 1999 digital alarm clock. And yet for some reason, when it comes to God, when it comes to Bible study, when it comes to spirituality, we want simple answers. We don't want to think mercy. Now I got to ask you, do we really want a God who is less mysterious than an alarm clock? Oh, stay with the preacher this evening. The Bible teaches us something spectacular. God is three in one. If you want to put a term to it, we are talking about monotheism, monotheism. Seventh-day Adventists are monotheists. We believe that God is one. Oh, I'm going to teach here for a minute. The Hebrews are deeply monotheistic. They believe that God is one. Even today, on a daily basis, Jewish people recite this creed called the Shema. It comes directly from Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, and it reads in Hebrew, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ehad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Even today, this prayer is repeated by our Jewish brothers and sisters every morning and every evening. This is a statement of monotheism. But listen to me, y'all. It is theologically rich. Woo! It's theologically rich. Look a little closer. Did you notice the threefold mention of God in the text? Uh-huh. Keep on looking. Mm. I want you to notice something special. Don't get nervous on me now. I need y'all to learn just two words. It's just two words. Don't get nervous. It's two Hebrew words. And if you can get these two words, it will open up just about everything. Here it is. Here it is. The first word is ehad. Uh-huh. Ehad. You can type that in the chat. However it sounds to you. Ehad. E-H-A-D. It's spelled E-K-H-A-D, but that's all right. The second word is Yahid. Ah, first word is Ehad. The second word is Yahid, Y-H-I-D. Mm. The word used for one, woo, hallelujah, in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4 is Ehad. Uh-oh, hey, hey, and we must ask ourselves, why is the word Ehad used when there are other Hebrew words that are more strictly meaning one, Woo! like the Hebrew word Yahid. Oh, okay. It's getting good. Here it is. Yahid means one, solitary and alone. But the word used in our scripture reading in this basic daily prayer of strongly monotheistic people is not Yahid, but Ehad. <laughs> Stay with the preacher tonight. Walk with me through the scriptures. Woo! Come with me to Genesis chapter 2 at creation. We read in Genesis 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they, the two of them, shall be one flesh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, and you guessed it, the word used for one in Genesis 2, 24 is also Ehad. Now, when Adam and Eve became Ehad, they did...
I'm going to switch devices and by God's grace, we're hopefully we'll stay connected. All right, we're going to work this out in Jesus name. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We're going to get through this together. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right now. Now, when Adam and Eve became one flesh, they did not become, stop being two separate beings. When Adam and Eve became one flesh, they just united as one. Mm, 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 mm. So when the Bible says that our God is a hod, it is saying our God is uniquely united. Have mercy. And can I come a little bit closer? Every Christmas season, people like to play Handel's Messiah. In it is a song quoting the messianic passage of Isaiah 9 verse 6. You know it. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hold up now. The text says that this son is also the Mighty God. Hold up now. The text says this son is also the Everlasting Father. Brothers and sisters, the Godhead is uniquely united. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I know what you're saying. You're saying I see too, but what about the Holy Spirit? Do we see him mentioned in the Old Testament? Isaiah 42 verse 1 mentions all three. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect and whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Mm. Jesus himself quotes Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Again, all three are mentioned because they are uniquely united. We could do a little bit more in the Old Testament, like at creation, where God says, let us make man in our image in Genesis 1 verse 6. But let's move on quickly to the New Testament. At the baptism of Jesus, we see the Godhead in action. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In Matthew chapter 3, 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightening upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So at the beginning of Christ's ministry, we see the Father. We see the Son, we see the Holy Spirit. And at the conclusion of Christ's earthly ministry, there it is again in Matthew 18 verses 20, 20, Matthew 28 verses 19 and 22. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Notice it says name. Notice the singular and name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world I know what you're saying I see the evidence in the Old Testament preacher I see the evidence in the Gospels preacher but what about the epistles in the epistles the Apostle Paul doesn't let us down Paul would mention all three of the Godhead like when he writes in 2nd Corinthians uh, 13 verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There it is, brothers and sisters. God, our God is one uniquely united. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm getting excited. Listen, so what are the implications? What are the implications for the doctrine of the Trinity? What difference does it make, brothers and sisters? I don't have all the answers, but for one, the Trinity reminds us the God that exists, he exists in community. Yeah, 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 yeah. The God that exists, he exists in community and his essence is relationship. His essence is relationship. This underscores what John, the beloved apostle would write in first John four verse eight. God is love. Now let me break that down. When I love, there are three involved. Myself, love, and the object of my love. Mm, mm, mm. One author put it this way. Whenever there is love, there are three. The lover, the loved one, and the love in between them. Mm -hmm. The idea of love, hear me, presupposes that there is someone who loves and an object that is love. Again, I'm going to say that again. The idea of love presupposes that there is someone who loves and someone who is the object of that love. So there is no love where there is nothing that is loved. Oh, here we go. Look at the chart. The idea of love presupposes there is someone who loves and an object of that love. There is no love where nothing is love. Love requires community. God is love. God is community. And perhaps we ought to be reminded that one of the best ways to experience God is uniquely united in community that is loving. That's a sermon for another day. We serve a triune God, the Father, uh, the Son, yeah, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! I'm getting excited, y'all. Allow me to take this concept of community one step further, and then I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite movies that my husband and I like to watch whenever it comes on is the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. The Fantastic Four are four people who became superheroes as a result of a mistake that scrambled their DNA. After the accident, one got the ability to stretch like rubber. Yeah, y'all know it. Another of the group soon realized that she had the ability to become invisible. Uh huh. A third in the group had the ability to turn himself into a human torch. Uh huh. And when he finally got control of his powers, he would just say, Flame on. Y'all know the Fantastic Four. The fourth gained stone like flesh and superhuman strength. They just called him Thing. Mm. Together. The Fantastic Four were able to team up overcoming evil and champion the cause of good in the world. And as a child, y'all, I always wanted to be part of the Fantastic Four. I even had a lunchbox with a beveled design of the Fantastic Four undercover. It is only now that I am older, Dr. McKenzie, that I realize I'm already part of a Fantastic Four. Through the presence of God in the life of the believer, we become part of the winning team of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Woo! The Fantastic Four. Can I go back to Daniel as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown in the fiery furnace? They threw in three, but when Nebuchadnezzar looked, he saw four walking around. Jesus showed up and brought air conditioning in the fire. Hallelujah. Do you notice the Bible says uh, that the fire was made so hot, so hot that those that threw them in the fire could not survive the fire and died. I'm a 
say that again uh, the bible tells us the fire was made so hot that those that threw them in the fire could not survive the fire and died and i came by tonight under the unction of the holy spirit to let you know when you are part of the real fantastic four you can live through what others are dying from Ooh, hallelujah did you hear the preacher when you are part of the real fantastic four you can live through what others are dying from god will keep you through the chaos in your life god will keep you through unemployment god will keep you through a breakup god will keep you through a breakdown god will keep you through your stress god will keep you through your worry god will keep you you through your headaches god will keep you you will survive what others are dying from first john 5 7 says there are three witness bearers the father the word and the holy ghost and these three are one that means anytime we get in the fire we are not alone there are four in the fire the father the son the holy ghost in you so hold your head up no enemy me can stand the power of this fantastic four no obstacle can stand in the way of this fantastic four no challenge is too great for this fantastic four no haters are too powerful for this fantastic four your haters thought that when they threw you in the fire that you were done but then they looked again and scratched their heads and behold there was a fourth man in the fire fire his name is jesus the alpha and omega jesus lily of the valley jesus bright and morning star jesus they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head for me he died but that's not how the story ends in three days time my jesus my savior he rose again the internet can't stop this fantastic for hallelujah nothing can stop you the father the son and the holy ghost they're uniquely united y'all they're uniquely united and i need you to understand no matter what you go through in this life woo, you are not alone as to go through your fires in the life <laughs> You are not alone as you go through your trials in this life. You are not alone. The doctrine of the Trinity teaches me I am in community with the best fantastic four that ever lived and we shall not be defeated. My God, in me, the fantastic four. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for all that you have revealed to us, reminding us we are not alone, that we are part of the fantastic four. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for community. Thank you for relationship. Thank you for relationship in the greatest team of all, the fantastic four. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, let all of God's children say, Amen and Amen. How? Hallelujah! It's the only word to say after such a powerful message. I have learned so much from this good word. The most important one is I am in community. Yes. With a powerful trinity of the Godhead. What do you say? I don't know about you, but I think I'm about to just buy a Fantaxi for a lunch bag and take it to work with me. <laughs> Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I got to be part of that. You know, um, Dr. Olivier, uh, powerful. And the enemy tried 
the enemy tried, but we got the word. And just an encouragement, things may happen to go against God's work. But when you team up with the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, one, what was that word? Oh, my. Ahi. Ahi. I think it's, it's a Ehad, Hebrew word. Ehad. Ehad. Ehad, yes. Ehad. Ehad, one. And you're talking about the Yahid. One, yes. solidarity, and one. But we're talking about that Ehad. One. Mm -hmm. And as he tells us in first John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and nothing was made that was made without him. Jesus, this Bible that we have, the word speaking to us at this very moment, the Holy Spirit that he sent to us, the father who was there, fire by night, cloud by day. Think about that. God is always with us. And I I want to be part of that fantastic form. This right fantastic form. Awesome. 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 God is one. Trinity in one. Thank you for that word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I hope you were blessed. Yesterday, our Dr. Mackenzie gave us about the Bible. Today, we heard from Dr. Olivier, the Trinity. Tomorrow, we're going to hear about the creation and we have so much more ahead. So we're looking forward to you joining us. And at this moment, we're just going to close off in prayer. Please continue to join us throughout the week, share and share the links. It's going to be a blessing. And please join us as we go to the communities as well. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this reminder that there is a great controversy here. But Lord, you are above it all. And we've learned so much about the Trinity. You, Father, are one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you're with us. And so long as we team up with you, we can never go wrong. We gain our strength from you. And continue to help us, Lord, to continue to work for you, to do your work, and to know we have everything that we need to continue in this journey. And to also help pull others with us. Just like the uh, three Hebrew boys in the furry furnace. With you standing by them, nothing could get in the way. So the same is for us. Be with each and everyone who's here listening, uh, those who are responsible for leading as well, those are the speakers that will be speaking this week, and also those who are joining. Please, Lord, help us to take this word and to use it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And